طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today with Imam Al-Hajjawi in Zad Al-Mustaqni fi Ikhtisar Al-Muqni' We're joining our Imam where he says Babu Salat Al-Kusuf Bab Salat Al-Kusuf The chapter pertaining to the solar and moon eclipse So this is discussing details pertaining to the Salat Al-Kusuf Whether that's a Kusuf, an eclipse with this, which is partial or full In both cases, whether it's partial or full the Salah is prayed so the word Kusuf it means the sun's eclipse and Khusuf with the Kha is generally referred to for the moon's eclipse uh, however the Sahaba radiallahu anhum may Allah be pleased with them it's reported that they would use the words interchangeably so they would sometimes use Kusuf for the uh, moon and Khusuf for the sun as opposed to using the original terms which is Kusuf for the sun and khusuf for the moon so they would use them interchangeably however one of the scholars the leading scholars of the arabic language thalaba and he's from the a'imat al lugha he's from the imams of the lugha imams of the language he said afsahul kalam and yuqal he said the most correct way of mentioning these terms is to say kusifa the shams so the shams with the kaf salat al kusuf kaf and with regards to the the qamar the moon khusifa al qamar with the kha Okay, and this was mentioned in Al Fasih by Imam Al Thalib, the Arabic linguistic. The asal of this Salat al Khusuf, the foundation principle of legislation for Salat al Khusuf, is found in the Quran as well as the Sunnah. With regards to the Quran, we have Surah Al Fusilat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Women ayat hi laylu wa naharu wa shams wa al qamaru. لا تسجدوا لشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. And from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala is the night and the day, and the moon and the sun. Do not prostrate to the moon or the sun. Rather prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa taala who created them. If you truly want to worship Allah as a wajal. So this is referring to the prostration of when the sun or the moon is seen in eclipse. Rather, we don't prostrate to the sun or the moon in eclipse. We prostrate instead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Bukhari and Muslim, we have the hadith of uh, Abi Mas'ud in Uqba, Ibn Amr radiyallahu anhu, who said he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna al-shams wa al-qamal la yakhsifani, la yankasifani li ahadin, li mawti ahadin min al-nas. Inna al-shams wa al-qamal la yankasifani li mawti ahadin min al-nas. That the sun and the moon they do not have an eclipse due to the death of anybody from amongst mankind. But rather they are signs from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you see them in the form of an eclipse, then get up and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Muslims, when they see this eclipse, this change in the universe, they rush to Allah Azawajal and they make prayer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as a way of seeking Allah's protection from any change in the safety that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given to His creation. And also they call upon Allah Azawajal to reaffirm the fact that they have chosen Allah to worship and to be their Lord alone in Tawheed. And knowing that these changes in the universe can only happen with the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they do not happen due to the death of anyone. Because in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quraysh, they thought that the eclipse came about due to the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's son, Ibrahim. So when Ibrahim died, it coincided with the eclipse and the people had thought that this was a bad omen. But rather that was not the case as the Prophet ﷺ said, لا ينكسفان لموت أحد من الناس That the sun and the moon, they do not eclipse due to the death of anyone from amongst mankind. The author, he says, May Allah have mercy upon him, تُسَنُّ جَمَعَةً It's recommended that this is prayed in jama'ah. It's recommended that this is prayed in jama'ah, this Salat al-Kusuf. So here there's two things to mention. The first and foremost is that the Salat al-Kusuf in of itself is Sunnah. It's Sunnah Mu'akkada. It's a stress Sunnah. And it's not something which is wajib. However, Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the position of it being wajib, the position of it being wujub, 
even though he didn't agree with it, he said it's a very strong one. And Imam Abu Hanifa is the one that holds that it's wajib to pray Salatul Qusuf. And Sheikh Ahmed Khalil mentions a very interesting and important point in his explanation. He said that, uh, that when this change happens in the universe, okay, and it's a visible change, and it's something which is there to scare mankind and to bring them back to the worship of Allah Azawajal, to show them the power and might of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if people then, when seeing this, do not go to worship Allah Azawajal and to prostrate to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then this shows that they have some riqqa in Iman, that this shows they have some weakness in their Iman. Because how can it be that this huge change is there in front of you, this uh, you know, amazing thing is taking place, and the people, they don't rush to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for safety. It doesn't make sense. The sunnah to pray this is in the masjid, not to pray it outside, okay? It's sunnah in jama'ah and it's sunnah to pray in the masjid. In Bukhari and Muslim, we have the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, where she said, when this took place, the kusuf took place, kharaja Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila al-masjid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out to the masjid. Faqama wa kabbara wa safa al-nas wa ra'ahu. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood and he made takbir and he got the people to line up behind him. So they prayed behind him in Jama'ah in the masjid. And the ulama, they said also with regards to people getting together in the masjid, then this is, you know, as a community people come together, it's better for the state of khushu and it's better for the state of yani, uh, reflecting upon their fear as a community together. Okay. وَكَوْنُهُ فِي جَمَاعَةٍ أَدْعَ لِلْخُشُوْ وَأَبْلَغْ فِي الْتَخْوِيفِ also, this Salat al-Khusuf, it's legislated for women to attend the congregation. Okay, if women want to attend the Salat al-Khusuf, then they are able to do so. The Salat al-Khusuf doesn't have, even though it's Salat al-Jama'ah, it's a congregational prayer for the community, it doesn't have an Adhan or Iqamah. Question to yourselves, why does it not have an Adhan or Iqamah? Tayyib, the Salat al-Khusuf does not have an Adhan or Iqamah because the Adhan and the Qamah are there for the obligatory Salawat. For those salawat which are wajib and salat al-khusuf is not an obligatory salah, rather the person who is calling the people to come and pray, he should say, As-salatul jami'ah, as-salatul jami'ah, ya marhamakum Allah. Okay, come to the congregational prayer. This is how the salah al-jami'ah is called for. Salat al-khusuf is called in that manner, not in the normal manner of the adhan or the iqamah. The author, he says, may Allah have mercy upon him, wa furada. He means here that it's sunnah to pray in jama'ah, but also if the people don't wish to pray in jama'ah for whatever reason, they can pray individually in the places that they are in, in their dwellings. If they wish to pray in their houses, then they can do so and pray in their houses. However, be, without a doubt, it's better to join the jama'ah of the community and pray with the community if the people are able to do so. But if they want to pray for Radha alone, then it's well and good they can do so. The author said, إِذَا كَسَفَ أَحْدُ nayarain." This prayer is to take place if either there is a moon eclipse or a sun eclipse, right? It's to take place, as we mentioned, if the sun eclipses or the moon eclipses. The author, he said, raka'atain, That the prayer consists of two raka'ah. Two raka'ah which are completely different from any other salah, which we will discuss in a few moments. In Bukhari and Muslim, Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said, جهر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في صلاة الكسوف بقراءته فصلى أربع ركعات في ركعتين وأربع سجادات. Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said in Bukhari al-Muslim that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he recited loudly in Salat al-Kusuf and he prayed four ركعات in two ركعات. Meaning for each ركعة there were two ركوز. وأربع سجادات and four sujood as they would normally be prayed in a two ركعة scenario. So in any case, the author, he said that this is to be prayed as two raka'at. How do we pray them? The author is now going to tell us, rahimahullah ta'ala, in detail. He says, يَقْرَأُوا فِي الْأُولَى جَهْرًا بَعْدَ الْفَاتِحَةِ صُورَةً طَوِيلَةً He said in the first raka'at, when the Imam is reciting after the Surah Al-Fatiha, he recites a long surah. And both of these, the Fatiha and the long surah, are to be jahran, are to be done audibly, loud, okay, so that the congregation can hear what is being recited. So the surah is going to be a long surah, and it's not defined which surah has to be uh, recited, I mean it's left open, it's not a specific surah. However, as many of the Mashaykh they said, 
that the A'imma of today, the people who pray the Salawat today, lead the Salawat today, their surahs are very short and this is against the Sunnah because the Prophet wasallam in one rak'ah, he would recite Surah Al-Baqarah or something to that length. Okay, so the surahs, they should be surah which is long as possible, uh, as long as this is, uh, you know, not too heavy upon the people, uh, then the surah should be something which is long and not a short one. ثُمَّ يَرْكَعُوا طَوِيلًا After having recited the long surah after Surah Al-Fatiha, <coughs> the Imam, he makes a ruku which is long. Why does he make a long ruku? Because when the recitation is long, then the ruku and the raf from ruku and the sujood, everything else has to be in proportion. Because the Prophet ﷺ, salawat, his prayers would be in proportion. If he stood for a long time reciting for long, then he would make ruku for a long time. And then he would make sujood for a long time. And then he would make his tashahud pretty long also. So the salah of the Prophet ﷺ was mutawazin, it was balanced between the different parts of the salah. It wouldn't be that there was a long standing and then a short raku and then a long sujood and then a short tashahud. Rather everything would be in proportion to the other parts of the salawat. So the author he said, ثُمَّ يَرْكَعُوا طَوِيلًا Then the Imam he makes the long raku, ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُوا وَيُسَمِّعُوا وَيَحْمُدُوا And then after getting up from the raku, the Imam, he says, Samiyallahu liman hamida, and he says, Rabbana wa lakil hamd, and anything else that he wants to say, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, barakan, fi, etc. The author, he says, after having done this, making the ruku and getting up from the ruku after saying, Samiyallahu liman hamida, he then he recites another raka. So in each raka of the Salat al Khusuf, or Khusuf, you will find that there are two rukus, okay? Two recitations and two rukus. So now, after having completed Samiyallahu al-Man Hamida, Rabbana wa lakil hamd, the Imam again starts from Surah Al-Fatiha. ثم يقرأ الفاتحة وصورة طويلة دون الأولى. So the author says that the Imam he recites the Surah Al-Fatiha again and again he recites another long surah, but it should be less in length as compared to the rak'ah which was before it. Okay, so what you're going to find is that each of the rakus and the recitation after that ruku gets less and less in length. Okay, so each raka, each part of the salah gets less in accordance to what was before it. So the author he said, recite Surah Al Fatiha and a long surah, but to ensure that it was less than the one that was before it. After having done that, thumma yarka'u fayutil. Then the person, the Imam, he makes the second raka after having completed the second recitation. And of course, this uh, recitation and this raka is uh, shorter than the ruku that was before it. The second ruku is going to be shorter than the first ruku. And then the person gets up from the ruku, saying, and anything else that he wishes to say so. As Sheikh Fahad al Mutiri, he said, it's the position of the madhab that this standing is not going to be a long standing, okay, after the second ruku before going into sujood. So outside of Salat al, uh, Salat al Khusuf, in a normal Salat, the Prophet Sallallahu would make a long standing, okay, if he had a long recitation. But in this Salat, there's not going to be a long standing, rather in the second, after getting up from the second ruku, the person goes directly into the sujood. The author, he says, ثُمَّ يَسْجُدُوا سَجْدَتَيْنِ طَوِيلَتَيْنِ then the person, he makes two long prostrations. Why does he make two long prostrations? Because we said that the Salah, when the Prophet ﷺ would recite a lengthy Salah, then the rest of his prayer would be in proportion to his recitation as much as possible. Okay, so the person makes two long sajdas after having made those two raka'at, which are considered to be one raka'ah. So in each raka'ah, there's two recitations and two raku's. And then after that, the person makes two Long sajda. The author he says, ثُمَّ يُصَلِّ أَثَانِيَةَ كَالْأُولَى And then the person gets up after having made sajda tain, after having done two prostrations, he gets up and he starts the second rakah. So the second rakah is the third rakah, which is going to be the third and fourth, but there's only two rakah. So again, this prayer has two rakah. In each rakah, there are two rukus and two recitations. So now the person gets up and he does the third and the fourth as he did the first and the second rakah. 
ثم يصلي الثانية الكالأولى لكن دونها في كل ما يفعل The author says he praised them like he did the previous ones but less in length and in amount as compared to what he had prayed previously in the first rakah ثم يتشهد ويسلم After the person has completed all the rakahat, the four rakahat, okay, two in one rakah, uh, then he makes the shahud and he makes taslim, okay. The author he says, فَإِن تَجَلَّ الْكُسُوفُ فِيهَا أَتَمَّهَا خَفِيفَةً If whilst the people are praying the salah, okay, the khusuf has ended, it's come to an end. So the people are praying the salah and they come to realize that the khusuf, the eclipse, has come to an end. In this situation, they start to bring the salah to a close. They start to bring the salah to a close. Question here, which rule of fiqh can be used to establish this point? That now that the khusuf has come to an end, that the people, they need to bring the salah to a close. They need to end the salah. Which rule of fiqh can be used to establish this point? We've mentioned it a few times in the chapter of salah. In different chapters of the book of Salah. طيب. The rule is Al Hukam Yaduru Ma'illatihi Wujudan Wa Adman. That the ruling revolves around the cause, okay, whether it's present or absent. Meaning, if the cause for the ruling is present, then the ruling is going to be present. So, if the eclipse is there and that's the cause for the ruling of the Salah, then the Salah will be present. When the eclipse, eclipse is not there, okay, then the ruling is not going to be present. الحكم يدور مع إلته وجودا وعدما. So once the sol- once the eclipse has come to an end, then the salah is going to be completed quickly and brought to an end. But it's not to be stopped immediately. Meaning to say that as soon as the people, the imam, he realizes that eclipse has finished, he shouldn't just stop the prayer there and then. Rather, he brings it to an end by completing whatever was left in the salah. But he does that quickly and in a br- in a uh, brief manner. So he doesn't wala yaqta'aha he doesn't just break it uh, off why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wala tubtilu a'malakum do not um, render your actions void meaning don't just break the act of worship without completing it طيب there's an opposite scenario that the um, prayer finishes before the eclipse has finished so Sheikh Ba Jabir he says in this situation if the prayer finishes before the eclipse is finished, meaning that Imam finishes the prayer, but the eclipse is still there, it's still going on, then what are the people supposed to do? Question to yourselves. In this situation, the prayer has finished, but the eclipse is still there. So what should the people do in this situation? Taib, nobody? Okay. So in this situation where the prayer has finished before the eclipse has finished, then in the time that is left, then the people, they should busy themselves by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and making sadaqah and reading Quran, etc. Any type of good deeds that they can do to please Allah azza wa jal and to keep the creation in the safety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be done. A point to mention, a mas'ala also, if the salah is missed in totality, then there's no qadha to be made, going back to the rule, because the hukam is only there with the presence of the eclipse. So if the eclipse has been missed and the salah wasn't made, then there's no qadha to be made because now the reason for the ruling, the reason for the salah is gone. The author now he's going to mention three scenarios where the salat al-khusuf, where the eclipse prayer is not to be prayed. So he says, وَإِنْ غَابَتَ الشَّمْسُ كَاسِفَةً He says if the sun sets, okay, whilst the eclipse is there, okay, because the the strength of the sun uh, around Maghrib time before it's descending or and as it's descending the sun is very weak okay so even if there's an eclipse it's not going to be very strong to the eye and it may not even be seen as the sun is uh, descending to Ghurub to its sunset so at this point this, uh, the um, the prayer is not going to be made the Salat al-Kusuf is not going to be made and what's the illah? The reason? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُمَا فصلوا. If you see the eclipse, the sun or the moon, then pray. And at this situation when the sun is going to descend, or it is actually descending uh, for Maghrib, then here the eclipse is not strong or is not going to be seen. There is another point pertaining to this, why the salah should not be done at this time, uh, before Salat al-Maghrib, after Salat al-Asr, is because if you remember in the Madhab, 
the madhab and the jumhur, the majority of the ulama, they hold the position that after Salat al-Asr, that any nafal is not to be prayed, right? There's not supposed to be any prayer after Salat al-Asr because this is one of the times where it's forbidden to pray anything outside of the obligatory prayers. The next situation the author mentions where the um, prayer is not to be done, أو طلعت والقمر خاصفون Or the sun is rising in the morning and there's a moon eclipse, okay? Of course, as the sun is rising, the moon eclipse is not going to be seen very strong. The uh, sultan of the moon, they say, uh, that the, the um, dominance of the moon, which is found in the night, is not going to be found there when the sun is rising, of course. Therefore, if it's a, you know, a lunar eclipse, a moon eclipse, then it's not to be prayed at this point because the eclipse is not going to be visible. The author, he says, in the third situation where, it's, where the um, Salat of Kusuf is not to be prayed, he says, أو كانت آية غير الزلزلة لم يصلي. He said, in a situation where you have universal ayat of Allah جل, signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are sent to remind the creation of the power and majesty of Allah جل, remind the creation to run back to the sujood of Allah جل, run back to seeking mercy and protection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, run back to trying to be worshippers of Allah after seeing his dominance and majesty. So if Allah for example sends a tornado, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a lightning storm, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes something like uh, the earth to open up a sinkhole or something of that nature, then the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, is saying that in this situation, Salat al-Kusuf is not to be made. However, if there is an earthquake in that situation, it's to be made. طيب. So we find, for example, in uh, the Musannaf of Abd al-Razak, in the Musannaf of Abd al-Razak, he mentions that Ibn Abbas and Ali radiyallahu anhuma, they would pray the Salat al-Khusuf if there was a zalzala, if there was an earthquake. Why? Because the earthquake is from something which is terrifying and causes wide devastation. And it has the meaning of Khusuf in the sense that it causes the creation to be in an extreme state of fear. Okay? Therefore, they should rush and they should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Salat al-Kusuf in this situation. This is the position of the madhab. However, there is a second riwayah, a second riwayah from Imam Ahmad, a second narration held by Ibn Taymiyyah wa ta'ala and others who said that any ayah, okay, min al-ayat al al-azima, any ayah from the ayat al al-azima, uh, from the universal signs of Allah azawajal, like the uh, like a you know even if there's a meteorite shower for example or if, the, or if there's a tornado or you know uh, yeah anything of that sort which is a major sign from Allah subhanahu wa taala then according to the second narration of the madhab of Imam Ahmad held by Ibn Taymiyyah then the people they should also pray Salat al Kusuf uh, for those situations because as we said part of the meaning of Salat al Kusuf is to remind people with the ma uh, majesty of Allah and how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So when Allah makes this kusuf, this eclipse, which, see, which is petrifying to many people who have sensed that Allah has taken away the light of the night or the light of the day, then people should come back to their senses and realize the power and majesty of Allah So Ibn Taymiyyah is saying this applies to all situations which are equal in um, being a universal sign of a large magnitude. The author he says, وَإِنْ أَتَى فِي رَقْعَةٍ بِثَلَاثِ رَقُوَاتٍ أَوْ أَرْبَعٍ أَوْ خَمْسٍ جَازًا If the person when praying Salat al-Kusuf, as we described Salat al-Kusuf is two raka, but in each raka there are another two raka'at. There are two raqus, two prostrations, two bowings which are done in each raka. So the author he's saying here, if you do three in one raka, or you do four in one raka, or you do five in one raka, then it's going to be permissible. So you could end up praying one raka with three ruku'at, okay, three bowings, meaning that you've recited three times in one raka, or you could have done it if you wish to do so four times, or if you wish to do so, you could do it five times. So with five, you would end up with two raka, but in each one, five raka'at, so that's 10 in total, okay. These are narrated uh, according to many of the scholars in the madhab and outside of the madhab uh, that the Prophet وسلم, that is authentic to pray in these ways. However, Ibn Taymiyyah was from those of the Hanbali scholars who said 
that the only sifa, the only description of the Salat al-Khusuf, which is authentic to be prayed, is the one where it's prayed in two raka'at. So you end up praying four raka'at, okay? In each raka'at, there are two raku's and two recitations. Ibn Taymiyyah said that these are the only authentic ones, and all of the other ones are weak or shad in one way or the other, even the one which comes in Sahih Muslim, okay? So this was the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala. Um, a mas'ala to mention that if you are praying uh, the Salat al-Khusuf then it's the first raka okay out of the two in each raka which is considered as being mu'tabar considered for you having caught the prayer okay so you have to catch the first raka for you to have caught that ruku that raka uh, so if you came to the prayer and you caught the second Raka in the first unit of the prayer, that would mean that you have missed the whole unit. Okay, the only way to catch that raka properly is by pack, by catching the first ruku and that which comes after it. Why do you think they said that it's the first ruku which is mu'tabr? It's the first ruku which is the one that validates your raka for that uh, particular unit of the salah. Why do you think they said this? That you have to catch the first raka out of the two for your salah for that particular raka to be valid. طيب. The reason they said this, as mentioned by Sheikh Amr Bahjat and others, is that the first raka out of the two, okay, is the one which is the rukan. The second raka is the zaid, is the extra one, and the extra one is nafil or sunnah. So catching the salah, the sulb of the salah, the foundation of the salah is done with the first rakah out of every two. So for in order you to catch a rakah, you have to catch the first rakah out of the two. Okay. Um, what else did I want to mention here? Also, if you left off the other rakaat, the extra rakaat, and only pray a salatul kusuf as two rakah, not four recitations, but rather just two normal recitations, then your salah will be still valid, okay? You don't have to, because it's sunnah. If you wanted for whatever reason to pray only two rak'ah, then your salah will still be valid. Also, another mas'ala to mention here is that ghusl is recommended to make for salat al-khusuf as it's recommended to make for all congregational salahs. Because the recommendation, like in the Shafi'i Madhab also, that whenever the people gather to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they should make salat al-ghusl uh, so they should make ghusl if possible or at least clean themselves from any uh, body odor which may be harmful to those around them because remember the angels uh, that the hadith says that verily the angels they become harmed by that which harms the sons of Adam so if you go into the masjid and your breath smells or you have body odor or your clothes or in a smelly condition and it harms the people around you then also the angels are going to be harmed by that according to the hadith which is found in the books of the sunan okay also another point to mention is that there is no khutbah there is no khutbah in salat al-kusuf however as mentioned by Sheikh Khalil al-Mushayqih Hafidullah Ta'ala in his explanation he said that the person the Imam can give a mawidha can give a reminder uh, to the people because the whole point of Salat al-Khusuf is a mawidha is a reminder to remind the people about the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much in need we are of the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there's no khutbah but the person the Imam if he wishes to do so he can give a reminder to the people Tayyib, we've come to the end of the class. It's been a very short one. Alhamdulillah, it's good to have a short class once in a while. Uh, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask. Otherwise, that which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us fiqh of this beautiful religion, understanding of this religion, and to make this small deed that we do heavy in our scales of the day of judgment. Ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.